All right, ladies and gentlemen, y'all already know what time it is, man. If you like the video, like the video, subscribe for more daily 2K content, and let's get right into the news. But first, what is up, all of my gym stars? What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BKA the People's Town, coming to you live with another video. Got a lot to talk about, a little bit of time to talk about it in, man, so we're just going to get right into it. Um, First off, Let's start, let's start here, man. We're going to get this video on the 12 minutes, but here we go. This is what we're going with today. Almond Joy or Miles? Damn it, I say Almond Joy or Miles. Y'all let me know which one y'all like down in the comment section. If y'all don't like either one of them, I, I expect a lot of people to say neither um, or either Almond Joy because a lot of people don't like coconut. Bridget don't like coconut. A lot of people don't like coconut. And if they do like coconut, they're gonna, they, nobody's gonna like plain coconut. They're gonna like coconut with, with uh, nuts in it, pause. But I never did like coconut like that either until, uh, until I stopped eating meat and became plant-based. Once I became plant-based, you have to drink coconut milk. You gotta have coconut milk ice cream and all that stuff like that. So coconut went with coconut water, all this stuff. I'm not a fan of coconut water still. I, I still just drink extra regular water from Walmart and then uh, put these drops in it since I can't drink soda anymore because it makes my stomach very upset and I, I just can't do it. But anyway, and none, of this, none of this here, all this must do about nothing. We're just gonna start and go straight down the list and uh, you know, we got some things to talk about, man. Check it out, Poe Boy Sin got his own documentary on on uh, NBA 2K TV. If you have not watched this, I think it's an excellent, excellent insight into the life of somebody who we've been watching for the, for all these years. You know, he's talking about how he started playing, how he started in 2K17, which is 2K17, 18, 19, 20. Took him four years to get to where he is right now, three years to get to where he is, of just grinding, grinding, grinding. Once you grind, like I always tell you, you gotta grind or do something for three or four years on YouTube and then you'll finally pop. He's done that, he's broken through with streaming, he's broken through with uh, 2K and all that. He's got his own, I call it a documentary because it really is a documentary. He's going through talking about everything, his experience, why he plays 2K, what he sees 2K as, uh, it's, it's a, you know, how it's a release for him. It's just like my life 2K, almost like a football life on the NFL, um, on the NFL network or what have you, or football life, you know, stuff like that. And you know, he talks about where he's from, what poor boy saying means, and all of that good stuff, man. And like I said, hey, I'm wearing this shirt in honor of him. Say, hey, Sin, I know you watched the video, man. If you want one of these right here, I got a hoodie for you, the Rip City hoodie. Them joints fire, man, hit me up. Just tweet me, man, say I need that, Jay. I need it. Anyway, but like I said, go watch it. It's an excellent thing, a lot of insight. It shows you that this game is more than just a game. This game is some people's livelihood, and I'm not gonna ever take that away from somebody. It's not my livelihood, but I like for it to be. But I, and I think a lot of us would like for it to be. But you know, that's just something that you guys should go watch. Positivity in the community. Go check out that video on CN's channel. I have the link down in the description. Up next, the fourth annual holiday classic, uh, you know, WR uh, Pro-Am League. The, the, this is the holiday classic. It said register your teams and all that. The deadline is going to be December 26th. And, uh, you know, this this is what we got. This is all the information on it right here that we have about it. The holiday classic. Uh, they have it's $75 per team, 16 teams minimum, and uh, $1,000 minimum. And that's what they got. And then they have the link right there. And I guess I'll put that down in the description as well. So if you want to register for the WR Holiday Classic, man, go ahead and register for that. If you feel like you got a team that, that does, that can do it, y'all do it. Do y'all think we should do an EPL holiday classic for the inaugural season? Cause I do it, we can do, I wanna do something like six teams, man. And um, maybe, you know, I, I, I'm not even really thinking about no purse, but if y'all, if you got a team that you wanna do, that let's, let's say let's say we gonna do six teams. And uh, you know, if we wanna do that and, and do a little holiday classic, since a lot of people gonna be off tomorrow and a lot of people be off on Christmas and stuff like that. And then the rest of the week, or we can do it throughout the weekend, but y'all let me know uh, when you you guys would like to do that. Cause I do want to put on a tournament for you guys, but I, but you know, I'm, I'm more of a pro-am community type person and all this stuff. So it'll probably be better if we did pro-am and all that. If you got a team, let me know down in the, in the description. Let me know how many teams we should do, all that good stuff. Up next, Nade has been banned. And uh, like I said, 2K, he say, what the F, bro? I didn't do anything. And here we go right here. This account has been has been banned due to a violation of terms of service 
please contact the cons uh, the consumer service customer service if you feel like this was done in there. And um, Chris, I mean, I guess he I guess he tweeted LD or whatever, and he said I'm I'm not in charge of bands, but I told Nate I'd inquire about this. And as always, it's you. I mean, it, that was it. And as always, oh, he's trying to say if. If you believe the ban slash suspension is a mistake, please, please contact 2K Support as they have information on them I'm not privy to. And like LD's trying to tell you that he's still, he's he's not, he's not the, uh, he's not that guy anymore. And then, and then Nate comes back and says, I've been a legend for three weeks now. If I was boosting, wouldn't they have banned me before I hit legend? That makes no sense. And I stream every day, shaking my freaking head. And uh, here we go right here. They just said, hello, Nage. Thanks for contacting the 2K support. It does appear that your account has been banned for boosting and and the temp ban will be lifted on uh, October, the, October, I'm sorry, I'm saying October, January 4th, 2020. So, I mean, it ain't that long of a ban, man. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, but from what I understand, we've seen a lot of, there's a lot of video floating out there about TNB members boosting. I can't say that they're boosting or whatever. And I have seen, there's, there's a lot of video floating out there with TNB members boosting, or it looks like they're boosting, or playing the same people over and over and getting astronomical scores or what have you. There may or may not be that type of video out there. Allegedly, and allegedly, Nade's gamer tag comes up in some of those videos and a lot of people have allegedly been sending those to 2k and allegedly uh, Nade has won a few of these uh tournaments or, or some of these events that have been very difficult to to win you know how i feel about that bro i'm just like i i don't know i can never say somebody's boosting but there's been a lot of evidence allegedly that involves him that places him around boosters or what have you. And there's been a lot of evidence allegedly that you can't win any of these awards or events without boosting in some type of way. So if somebody won something, it's a strong possibility that they've been boosted. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that he was boosted. I'm just saying that that there's there's strong ties to it, strong links. Maybe that's what people are thinking about right now. I don't know. But they got all the information on the back end. So, hey, if they if they see something, if they see an anomaly, then uh, that's what they're going to go with. Um, up next, we got this video, man. Um, Chalk has been tweeting a lot. And, uh, you know, this is something that he's tweeting about. And, you know, he's talking about how 2K views are up and down. And, and, and you know, being negative really doesn't help anything and all that good stuff. I'm gonna and uh, Ninja put out a video on something close to that. Let's let's we're gonna listen to Ninja real quick, man, and then we're gonna we're gonna go from there. And we're not gonna listen to Ninja because because of view sub count and all that good stuff because we know why why Ninja's up there. He caught a game at the right time, and uh, you know that's why he's there. But still, got all content creators out there. It's kind of clear my opinions and some of the statements I've made about people who are negative towards uh, video games or just anything in general, especially when it is your entire essentially career and your job. I don't think a lot of content creators, I don't think a lot of influencers realize the power that they have. Um, and honestly, the influence that they have. Uh, if you are not enjoying something about a video game, it doesn't matter what game it is, Call of Duty, Fortnite, Halo, whatever, you know, there are positive ways to go about it, expressing your opinion. Um, and when you just kind of tweet something or say something uh, on, on Instagram and Twitter, I'm not talking about saying something on stream. Like after you die, if you rage, and you yell, and you say, this game fucking yeah, sucks. Like, that's, that's literally just, like, heat of the moment yeah. gamer shit, right? It's totally different. But when you take the time to go out of your way to post on social media and without, you know, full context or, or really explaining what you don't like about something, for example, yeah. just saying that, oh, the game effing sucks, tweet it out, boom. It's only hurting you. Exactly. It's only hurting you. It's only hurting the game. It's, it doesn't help anyone. It might not be hurt. You're not going to get more viewers no, from that. You, you, the game isn't going we'll to get more players from that. that People aren't going to see you talking shit about Call of Duty, and then all of a sudden Call of Duty is going to get more players and more viewers. Right. If anything, the only thing that's going to happen is it's just going to take away from it. That's it. Nothing good happens from it at all. Except for maybe since we live in a rage culture where everyone wants to hop on board of negative shit, you just get a bunch of retweets and favorites and a bunch of likes. Exactly. So if you're farming for that, then good for you. 
But as a content creator, as an influencer, you guys have so much more power. And you guys, re I, I feel like a lot of people, including myself sometimes, I'm guilty of this as well. People can you, you can, you can express your opinion in a positive way. For example, if you don't like the current Fortnite update because you don't like the lightsabers in the regular playlist, you can be like, man, really excited for, you know, the lightsabers to be gone, which they are. It's a limited time mode. Just my two cents in general. I really would like all content creators, all, all influencers to really kind of think before they tweet. Uh, you know, if you're not enjoying something, tweet out some positive criticism and critiquing and what you, you know, don't just say the game sucks or don't just say you hate the update or don't just exactly. explain why, explain what you like to have back, you know, bring some positivity into it and, and, and make, you know, the change for something good instead of just throwing out random hate. I mean, and, and I can, I totally understand that. I totally agree. With, uh, I totally understand and agree with that. Not because it's ninjas, but just because of the fact that this is something that I say every year, man. And we do this. And then like, here we go, chop. He said, I've been saying this for a long time, especially with 2K. We aren't we aren't as fortunate to have a mega fan base like the other games. The, uh, the more we talk down on our game, the more disinterested our audience will become. All we're doing is killing our crowd. Something to think about. But see, this is the thing, Chop. People that made it don't care. The people that have already made it, when they go back to that video when they were playing their game that they came up off of, they weren't saying this type of stuff. When people were coming up off 2K18, like people people have talked so much trash about 18, threw salt on it, killed the fields, threw radiation bombs on it and all that, and said you will not grow anything here ever again. And the people that pushed and played those games, right, they became popular and they became at the head of the next game and they blew up during 19. And then those same people are doing the same thing during 20. It's all good to speak good about a game and talk good about it and elevate it when it's the game that you're coming up off of, right? And like I said, when people say the game is the worst game, the people that play the game are the people that come up off it. Davis came up during 18, uh, Duke came up during 18, Ticino came up during 18, exploded during 19, stuff like that. And then it's like, when you get to, when you get to a certain point, you don't care about the people behind you. So. When people did, like, like that's what I'm saying, people, everybody from the 2K community is just straight ished on the game during 18. And though, and it hurt those guys is trying to come up. But they kept pushing, and they kept playing the game, and guess what? They came up. So people are always going to rise to the top in spite of everybody salting the game. I mean, you, you should have seen the venom that the 2K community was putting on 18. Like, it's just the worst game ever. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, it did have some problems. The pushback and the blow and all this stuff, those were issues. But the game was playable. And the one thing that I would never do is try to hurt somebody else's pocket. So if I don't really like a game, I'm just not going to play it. 2K19, I really didn't like the game that much. So I didn't play it. But then I got on my point guard, and then I enjoyed the game. I'm out if I if I enjoy the game I'm gonna play it if I don't enjoy the game I'm not gonna play it but if I don't enjoy something about the game I will tell you what I don't like NBA 2k19 I did not like the fact that Biggs could dribble the basketball it's just like Swante y'all keep saying Swante Swante is, is is a pinnacle like he's somebody that people should actually listen to y'all might not think so but one thing Swante always does, when he complains about something, he comes back with a counterpoint why this would make it better and how he feels like this would make the game better. He always comes with constructive criticism. He's not just complaining. Everybody on 18 was just like, ah, this game trash, the game trash, the game trash. And they just saw it the field, killed the community. After they came up off of 16 and 17, they just crushed 18 and thought that nobody was gonna come out of it. And those guys rose to the top and came out of it. And then they blew up even higher on 19. And then boom, look, look at where they are now. So regardless of what somebody's saying about the game, you can always come up out of it and you can always keep playing. Look at ATL. They said they said 2K18 was dead. Look at what ATL did. I don't care if y'all think it's dead. I'm going to keep on grinding. And look, he kept grinding and he's still grinding. And look, ATL straight now. He blew up out of that. So regardless of what somebody's saying and any type of stuff surrounding the game, you can come up out of it. The thing is, it does make it significantly more difficult. But... The problem is, if you are looked at as a credible source in the gaming, in the game, like you shouldn't just say it's trash. Come with some constructive criticism and don't just try to salt the field and make it so nobody else can't 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 break through. But like I said, using those guys as an example, you can never really make it so nobody can come through. 2K18 has some of the highest views of all time, especially with Davis and Ticino and Duke and all those guys. And then 19 was even better. So if we can just push through through 
20, get through this, keep our names up there or whoever's up there, then 21 will be a year, man, when it comes up. Up next, hey, Chop has left DF. Now, he did go on a tweeting tirade about the whole thing about how it's so hard to, to do this and 2K views are up and down. And then people are like, why don't you play other games and all this? It's the same thing I tell people. You got to have a base first. You have to build that fan base. I Maverick has like three channels, right? He got the Daily Dose. He's got Math Plays pretty much. And then he's got his own channel uh, where he does Madden. He built that fan base off of Madden first. And then he got you interested in his family. And then everything became about family. You got to do something first to get you to a certain plateau. Everybody else in the 2K community that went another direction, they used 2K first. And then they went another direction. There's nobody that just came up off of, hey, I'm just going to turn my camera on and just do this. And, and, and if they weren't doing like current events and stuff like that, even DJ Academics, he just does the little quick videos. But guess what? Those are videos about relevant topics. And that's why his channel explodes. Because if you're talking about relevant things, then you're going to be going. But anyway, Chalk says he's out of DF, uh, no longer in DF. Thanks to thanks them for the opportunity and giving me a chance. And, uh, you know, early in the year. Now, maybe this could be, let me say, you're about, you're going to do big things. This community can't, this community, man, in this community, man, Keep doing your thing, grinding, giving them all types of uh, support, all this stuff. People think it might be fake beef. A lot of people think it might be more related to this right here, the overtime thing. If you've been paying attention, you know that overtime has been collabing with a lot of people. They've been picking people up. They, uh, they're trying to make T-Jack look like the best basketball player of all time. They collab, they collab with Two Hype. That was a nice shot. Look at Cash's face. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. They collab with Two Hype, and they're really going about this marketing thing the right way. I can't even lie to y'all. I'm trying to take the time, man. They're going about the, uh, the marketing thing the right way. They're coming in. They got a group of people that are on the rise, and, uh, you know, they grab them. And then they're going to put them in the house or what have you. This is going to be something like a reality show. I can I can assure you of that. Then they put them against the next most prominent group. Because when you got paper, you can do that. You can go to Two Hype and say, hey, we're going to fly these guys out here. We're going to give y'all $50,000 a piece or something like that to do this video. Boom. And you can elevate your people just like that. But, hey, T-Jack says probably one of the most intense basketball games ever. I didn't see it that way. Um, I mean, some might say that they were just playing gingerly or Olay defense and stuff like that. And I can't, I can't help, I can't get hate that because you're trying to make both sides look good. But at the same time, you're trying to, you don't want nobody to get hurt or nothing like that. And if you're thinking that people can't get hurt, then this might be one of the reasons that they were playing out there playing gingerly. Look at that, T-Jack said, T-Jack, look at that, pull up. It's obvious T-Jack got a nice jump shot. I'm not going to lie about that. I don't know about his movement. If I had, look at that, boom, turned his ankle. And you know what I'm saying? So, like, you don't want to be playing too, 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 too rough out there. But there are rumblings that Chalk, and, uh, like, T-Jack has called out Chalk saying this is going to be one of the most physical basketball games ever. And uh, Chalk, is talk and Chalk was like, I'm not going to play him because of the integrity reasons. He's like, when I tried to play him in the beginning because... You know, when I wasn't popping and I tried to play him, then he didn't want to play me. But now that I'm popping and, you know, I'm popping and they got this new group and they're just trying to get, get some clout. Now he's want, now he wants to play me. Now he's trying to goat me into playing. Look at this. What I say right here. This, this is something that came from the great Sidney Dean said one time. Money talks, bullshit run a marathon. If they put the right number in front of Chalk, he need to go play that boy. That's all I'm saying. They put the right number in front of me. I'm playing. You see the, the two hype people. They don't really play nobody like that. Cash play anybody. But they don't really play nobody like that unless you got the clout. And they played and they put the right number in front of them. Money talk, bullshit, run a marathon. You can, you can miss me with that stuff right there. Unless you're not doing it for the money. In, 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 in which case, hey, pure intentions. Pure, the, the road to hell is paved with pure intentions, baby. So it, it is what it is. I don't care about nobody. That's why I tell you, I don't care about nobody intentions. You want to keep the community pure and all that. Look, money talk, bullshit, run a marathon. Them boys come put 50 grand in front of you, five grand in front of you, 10 grand in front of you and say, just play this game. I'm playing the game. I don't know about y'all. But I, I mean, you know, hey, it, it could be his morality. It could be his moral compass and all that good stuff, man. You know, it is what it is. I can't hate on nobody for that. If he feels like because they didn't want me then, I'm not going to play him now. You know, back then they wouldn't want me. Now I'm hot. They all on me. Hey, but I tell you what Mike Jones did. I bet Mike Jones banged all them chicks. Now, how about that? Anyway, man, I got to get up out of here, man. Y'all read between the lines on that one. Hey, Mike Jones banged all those chicks. Look, now you hot. They all on you. Get 
the bread because the bread is not promised to you past this year. You got a one year pass to blow up and do your thing. Do your thing and blow up this year. You got a one year pass to do whatever you want and you're going to get paid. Next year, I ain't promised to you, my guy. So, you know, hey, if they offer you the right number, do your thing. Anyway, got to get up out of here, man. Almond Joy or Miles? Almond Joy or Miles? Y'all let me know down in the comment section what y'all want. Let's get this video to 500 likes, and I'm going to holler at y'all next time. Till next time, it's your boy, Jay Easy, a.k.a. Fresh from the Barbershop, BK the People's Champ. Godspeed! Holla!